Good morning. Good to be with you this morning. We just uh, got done with some really good news uh, for which I'm very thankful. Um, we have a little dog, for those of you who may not know. Uh, it's a little black Pomeranian, and her name is Pim. And yesterday she got into uh, some candy um, and uh, ate a bunch of dark chocolate, which naturally is worse than milk chocolate. And chocolate is something you don't ever want to give your dogs. Um, so she is up at Cornell right now getting an education. And uh, we uh, just got news back from the um, the doctor up there, and she made it through the night well. Um, we were a little concerned as to whether or not she was going to survive this, and there's still some some concerns uh, in terms of her health and uh, and well-being. At 12 years old, she's not a young dog, and and uh, so. But the news was very good, and we're extremely thankful. Uh, and we would certainly be uh, very grateful for any prayers that you may uh, head off to God on her behalf. So uh, so thanks for doing that, and I know many of you will. Uh, I'll keep you posted tomorrow. Um, I hadn't really done a, a, a review of my toe for a while, and uh, so I just wanted to say that my toe's coming along well. Uh, it was not an infection as such, it was uh, eczema and uh, uh, that does some strange things to my feet. So uh, once in a while that's happened and I just really didn't recognize it when it hit. Uh, but my feet are doing okay, so I really appreciate your prayers. I, I think uh, that's an answer to prayer because it, it really looked like I was having an infection setting in. And that's not the case, so I am thankful for that. Would, and again, encourage you, as always, feel free to, to uh, text me or, or um, you know, Private message me or put right on the on the uh, uh, on the on the the, the yeah feed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any concerns that you'd like to have lifted up in prayer, and uh, we will make sure that uh, we cover them, and uh, mm -hmm. and we will thank you for sharing in that. All right. Well, uh, it was a it was a long night and. <laughs> So this is this is really good news, and we're pretty excited. And hopefully, uh, all of you will have some some really good news today and uh, encouraging news in your in your own life. Um, I want you to know that uh, I do pray for everybody um, every day, a couple times a day, for your safety and your protection. And uh, mm -hmm. I really believe that uh, the prayer is one of the things that is going to help get us through this at, at a very different level than would be the reality otherwise. I think one of the things that happens when we pray um, mm -hmm. is that we, uh, you know, when we pray, we're, we are connecting with God for one thing, but we are showing our dependency on God and uh, and that's a reminder which has huge dividends huge payoffs in our own lives as we look at that and we celebrate that and uh, and we recognize just exactly how much we need God and and it pleases God that we engage our lives um, and that's clear biblically I mean it absolutely is clear how, how often does God step in, in the Old Testament in a, in a direct way, you know, to do the things that need to be done, to make sure that his people know that he loves them and that he is caring for them. And, uh, and, and the whole setup, the whole worship setup that he does with the, uh, with the Israelites is, is so complete, but it causes them to focus on their relationship with God. And, and it gives them a way, even though, you know, this is long pre-Jesus, um, it, it gives them a way to engage with God through the sacrificial system, which was far from perfect mm -hmm. and insufficient. It never it never got the job done, really, because it was, uh, it was the law, and it was not a grace-filled moment uh, in the same way. But... Uh, but God has always wanted our attention. He's always wanted us to be focused in Him. 
and to give ourselves to him and to recognize um, not his greatness for the sake of, of saying, I'm great. Now, you better really understand that. And, uh, you know, n- nothing like that. It, it's it's just, again, recognizing that that's who we are. We are when we are in relationship with God. And when we're not in relationship with God, we are not what we might be. Anyway, having said that, let us engage this morning in our study. Uh, and are you ready for the invocation? You know, if you write these things down, you yeah, you can probably, by the end of the week, you can say them from memory. <laughs> Lord, you have promised to meet those who seek your face. Come now and reveal your presence to me as I make myself present to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. I'm going to go to the psalm today um, and uh, because it, it's really one of my favorite psalms. And especially considering uh, the, the background of, of being born and raised in the southern tier of New York and having spent uh, a great deal of my life in the, in the southern tier of New York, uh, a land of valleys and hills, even mountains although having been out uh, in out west visiting friends in colorado i know that what we have are not mountains in the same sense but they seem pretty mountainous and i'll tell you what if you're hiking up one of them they can get you know mountainous enough thank you very much but um the uh, the psalm we're going to read is the 121st psalm now if you know me if you've been around me if i've ever been your pastor um, you're going to recognize this. That's the funeral psalm. And uh, I use this very consistently in funerals because I I really appreciate the words and it touches my heart. And, and you know, that may, may seem a little, a little arrogant of me to say, I'm doing that one because I like that one. Um, but most often people leave me to my own devices in terms of choosing scripture. Uh, when, when I have a funeral and I ask, okay, were there any favorite passages of Scripture? And this is not a quiz, okay? We're not evaluating how much Scripture you know or how much Scripture the person knows. I'm just trying to find some stuff that might be comforting, you know. And uh, people usually say, well, we'll leave that to you, you know, because after all, you're the expert. <laughs> sure. Anyway, uh, this is just this is just one of my favorites. And uh, it really is a powerful psalm. And, and I always tell the same story, and you're going to get it today, um, realistically, because it, it's not the be-all and end-all of this psalm, but boy, it is for Jamie. Um, and, uh, and maybe it'll be helpful to all of us. Psalm 121. And I, I look, it's a song of ascents. <laughs> you know, like ascending. Yes, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Amen. Um, You know, growing up in the southern tier of New York State, you usually have got hills around you at the very least and valleys. I remember... uh, taking a couple friends who had been born and raised in Lockport, which is up in the Lake Plains region of New York, which is is flat. Um, Lockport was a wonderful place. I really I was there for six years, loved the church, loved the people, um, and, and enjoyed the topography even. But when uh, when we would go down to my mom's and and for you know 30 plus years I spent most of my days off at my mom's house mowing and uh, uh, working around the house doing the things that needed to be done for her 
But I also spent uh, a little time, almost every time I went uh, out hunting, because that's just something I really love to do, being out in the woods and the fields and stuff. And uh, so I took a couple friends with me from Lockport one time. And, uh, and when we really got down into the hills, you know, when you cross Route 20 heading south, uh, there's a long, a long grade that goes up. And I, one day I suddenly realized that every time I was about halfway up that grade, I would heave this huge sigh because I was getting back into the hills. And, uh, and so that's always been a part of my, uh, of my life and my love. I, I would have a hard time uh, not being someplace near the, uh, the hills or at least some minor mountains. Um, you know, some people it's the, it's being close to a body of water that that's really critical. Kathy has memories of Silver Lake where her parents had a cottage and, and, uh, water is something that's very important to her. Uh, for me, it's hills. It really is. And, uh, as, as we stood on top of a hill, we were going woodchuck hunting that day and we stood on top of this hill and you could see seven separate valleys, you know, and, uh, and to see the last one and realize it was another valley, you had to use your binoculars, you know. Uh, but it was gorgeous. And we stood there, and I kid you not, we stood there for probably half an hour, 45 minutes, just staring out across the expanse. And there were three or four, you know, again, you got your binoculars up, you could see them. You couldn't see them with the naked eye, all of them. There were hawks that were circling, you know. And uh, and we were, we just marveled at the beauty of it, you know. I lift up my eyes to the hills. And then when uh, Kathy and I and the kids moved to Dansville, our parsonage was up on the eastern hill of the valley that uh, Dansville sits in. And so as I would back out of my driveway every morning, you know, I, and I usually drove, um, once in a while I'd ride my bike, uh, once in a while I'd walk, but usually I drove. And I'd back out and uh, and so I'd be facing down into the valley and looking west and uh, and truthfully about more southwest and I would always take a moment if nobody was coming to look out across the expanse lifting up my eyes to the hills because when I lifted up my eyes to the hills I could see what was coming cuz almost all of our weather came out of the southwest and uh, and so you know you could look across the valley and up on the hills on the far side and uh, you know if you saw bright sunshine and blue skies you knew that was what was coming if you saw black clouds roiling you knew you were going to get rained on or snowed on or you know you were going to get weather you weren't going to enjoy that much necessarily and uh, and so I would I would back out and then I would look ahead and uh, you know lifting up my eyes and and I would get a sense of that which was to come. And uh, and so you know every time I every time I read this, uh, every time I have read this psalm, um, those are the thoughts that roll into my mind. You know, just being in the hills and looking to the other hills, even, or being in the valley and looking up to the hills, and uh, and the way that the hills uh, and and the valleys worked together, uh, just always boggled my mind um it, it's just it's such a beautiful thing but uh, when i was you know when you're down in the valley you're looking up and uh, and i and i couldn't help but be reminded you know every time i read this that you know we're we're down in the valley and and uh, and even if we're not geographically in a valley <laughs> in a valley in our lives we're we're in valleys last night we were in a valley we were hurting pretty bad uh, over Pim and uh, and you know what do you do it's like ah right do you ever do that uh, and and even rolling your eyes the whole concept of rolling your eyes what do your eyes do they go Poof, upward I lift at my eyes you know and when we you know we in despair it's like oh no and what do we do we look up there's a spiritual reality that goes on in that, folks, and you may not be in touch with it, but God is. Make no mistake about it. You know, make no mistake about it. Um, I lifted my eyes to the hills. 
from whence does my help come and uh, and my help comes from the Lord now we know that you know God isn't like up in the sky someplace so it's not like there's this concrete reality but the reality is we stop looking at what we can see and know that's ahead of us directly it's like when you're walking I look down I run into things because I'm looking down when I walk that's that's the nature of of how I walk and uh, uh, you know and when we're looking down we can see the physical of what's right ahead of us but I want to see farther ahead than that you know and and, uh, and that was the part that uh, always got me as I backed out onto that road I could look an hour ahead time wise and have a sense of at least what what the weather was going to do and the reality is that when we look ahead, when we look up, when we look toward God, uh, you know, lifting up our eyes to the hills, we get a measure of, uh, of what's coming. Not necessarily that we know it's going to be good, bad, and different, okay? But we get a measure of knowing what's coming because we know that God is going to be in it. The encouragement that that brings to us is tremendous. And, uh, and it doesn't mean it makes everything good when things are going bad. But um, it does make a big difference in terms of how we approach it, even when things are bad. Even when things go from bad to worse, when we lift up our eyes to the hills, you know, when we are looking upward toward God, uh, we know that God has a handle on it, whatever is going to happen. And, and that's huge. You know, and, and what are we promised? What are we promised about the future when we look to God? Uh, he will not let your foot slip. He will not slumber. He will be watching over you at all times. Lord watches over you. And he's your shade at your right hand, so the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. Now, notice what it says there. He is your shade at your right hand. That means that God doesn't just constantly cover us up, okay? God doesn't constantly cover us up and protect us from the sun and, and hide it from us or hide us from it. Um, the fact is, though, you always have a place you can go because that shade that you need is at your right hand. And uh, I don't know what I'd do without that. Jamie, Jamie likes to get out and stand in the sunshine sometimes and do stupid things, you know. But the shade is there. And sometimes I'm called to do things out there where there is no shade. But the shade is there. The comfort is there. The, the veiling and, and, the, and the hiding out. Uh, you know, and and don't, don't think that's a terrible thing because uh, if you happen to remember, a guy named Elijah had to hide out a number of times. And God provided for that, even to the extent of, of getting him out someplace in the wilderness where nobody could find him, and the only one that could find him were the ravens who brought him stuff to eat. Okay, So God is not above hiding us out when we need that. Uh, but that's that shade, and it's at our right hand. And all we have to do is sidestep back under God's protective hands. What a powerful thing. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. So God is watching over your life, not just in this life, but looking ahead to eternity. And uh, what, a, what a blessed thought that is. Knowing, you know, the days of our, of our lives are numbered. God knows what they are. It isn't like God said, okay, well, I'm going to give you, th you know, 35 years. You, I'll let, I'll let you have 93. And you, eh, forget it. You're done now. You know, that's not how God does these things. But God knows what the impact of the things in our lives is going to do to us, to our bodies, leading us toward that eventuality of physical death, but spiritual death eternal life and uh, and and so this is the God that we serve people God that when we lift up our eyes to he is there 
He, his, he provides his shade for the needed time of protection. He walks with us in the midst of the sunlight and the moonlight, and he is watching over us to keep us from any ultimate harm every day of our life and every day of eternity. Um, such a promising, such a promising psalm. It is a psalm of ascents, you know. It lifts us up. It's an encouragement in difficult times. And, uh, and it's a reflection of God's love. Such a powerful reflection of God's love that he never lets us go out there by ourselves. And he gives us enough of what's ahead to keep us on the track if we're willing to pay attention, if we submit ourselves to him. And, and that's, just, that's just great, you know? That is just such a wonderful blessing. But again, it revolves around God's love. And, uh, and you know, so what, what's the deal today? Well, the deal is God loves you. He's watching out over you. If you will lift up your eyes to the hills, you're going to find God waiting there for you. With the next step, with encouragement, and most of all with love, because you are his beloved child. And that's his desire for you, because he knows that that is the only way that you truly can be you. Amen. Uh, I, I do. I still haven't found the Bible study from last night. If anybody was on and, and saw that, and I was not, as I said, st selling state secrets in some little nook, I went in and sat down, and I was dejected and discouraged, and I was very upset with myself. And I didn't turn the light on when I walked into my office, and I went over and sat down and was digging through my desk and thinking, maybe I put it in my Bible, maybe I, you know, it folded it up. I remember folding it up. And uh, and so I sat there, and, and I didn't realize quite <laughs> how dark it was. And... Uh, so if you were if you were on there thinking oh, maybe he's got a watch I could buy, <laughs> yeah. uh, I apologize. Uh, I will try to do better in the future. But you know, even there, uh, God was the shade, I guess there. Huh? But uh, but I I really I think in retrospect, God had some other stuff for us to cover last night, and not what Jamie had prepared. And uh, and so that's okay, you know that's okay. But for those of you who expected a a summation of the uh, how to have a nice afterlife uh, might have been a little disappointing. Love y'all. God bless you. Have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.